Hey everyone, welcome back to another Tic Tac Tycle. Today I've got some stretches that you're going to do with Bachi, and one of those stretches evolves into a really cool conditioning drill. Let's go. I want to start by saying that I recognize some taiko players may find using their bachi as a stretching tool to be a little uncomfortable, if not outright sacrilegious. So don't use your bachi in that case. Get a dowel or a stick. You can find something in the kitchen that works as long as it's long, generally straight, and durable. I probably wouldn't use this, but there are other things you may find around the house that work for you. Also, for any of my stretching videos, I've got to do the disclaimer. All stretches on Tic Tac Tyco are for demonstration purposes only. If you feel any discomfort during a stretch, gently stop. If you feel any pain during a stretch, stop immediately. My body is accustomed to the stretches that I do, and my flexibility is not your flexibility. Please proceed with caution. All right, with that out of the way, let's get to the first stretch. This one is a very, very common stretch. I've seen countless numbers of taiko players doing it. You simply take the bachi, hold it in the middle, and rotate the wrist back and forth. That's it. It's not about speed, and it's not about strength. You're not trying to do this fast or hard. Just loosening up. That's it. This is a stretch. The most common way I've seen this stretch done is to stand and let the arm dangle. But you can do this out in front. You can do this with the elbow in. You can do it out to the side. All these different variations will have different changes of focus, but it's essentially the same stretch. So experiment. Try both arms and see what feels different depending on where you put it. The next stretch can be done in one of two different ways. Either rotations forward to the outside of the wrist, or rotations backwards also to the outside of the wrist. And if these look familiar, you're not wrong. This is almost exactly like the bocce tricks of twirls that I've broken down in previous videos. But the tricks are meant to look pretty. So you're focusing on a specific angle and you move the arm to get that angle. This is just a stretch. So it doesn't matter what angle the bocce is. As long as I can continue in a nice steady flow and my wrist is rotating, that's all that matters. And of course you wanna make sure you're practicing on both sides. I don't find the inside one to be all that worth it. Um, I'm rotating my wrist just as much going outside. So these are a lot harder. And if I'm just stretching, I don't really want to work on the stretch when this does the job just fine. All right, the next stretch is where we have both a stretch that can transform into some conditioning. But let's start with the stretch. You want your bocce in your upright palms. You're going to grab lightly. And I, I mean lightly. You're not gripping because you're going to be moving and letting go. So I'm grabbing in both. I'm going to choose one hand to let go. When I let go with one hand, the bocce kind of wants to fall. So I'm going to let it rotate. Once I get to the top, my other hand is now going to help get it back to the, where it was, which was parallel to the floor. So it's here, and I'm pushing down at the very end. So I'm twisting but I can't quite get all the way, so I'm helping it get down. A really important point here is I'm not pressing down. I'm not trying to destroy my shoulder. I'm just making sure it doesn't flip back. I can rest the weight of my arm with one pinky, and that's more than enough. Get that stretch out. Keep the arm extended, not locked. You're not trying to keep it straight and stiff, but it's not bent. And, of course, other side. Remember, you're going outside, up, and around and then just kind of rest the weight gently. On to the conditioning phase. And I debated whether or not to make this a separate video and ultimately I thought it's so similar to the stretch using the same basic motions to start, why not put it in this video? So starting again, both palms up, you're going around but instead of pressing down to help continue it, you're going to stop and catch. So I'm going 270 and when it hits top, I'm stopping it, I'm catching it, and I'm grabbing it, and I'm going to take the palm that's down here, letting go, and I'm gonna rotate. So thumb is down, 
thumb is down again. Re-grab and come back 360. So the bocce is upward again. The catching hand stays where it is and it's just catching. As far as the bottom hand is concerned, I'm not trying to get a perfect palm to bocce grip. I'm just trying to get to the point where when I grab, I have control. So it's not about rotation, it's just turning the hand enough. And repeat, repeat, over and over. I'm not doing it fast and I'm not doing it hard. I'm doing it over and over, nice and relaxed. Eventually, you're gonna feel the burn up in the shoulder. And one thing that's really important to know, you may have figured this out already, is if you go too fast, it's gonna hurt. That's one reason not to worry about speed. Repeat, over and over. Of course, you want that to happen on both sides. So again, same idea, letting go, catching, turn the wrist over, catching, catching. My arm is not completely straight. It's slightly bent. That's okay. This is gonna work the shoulder, not the elbow, and it works the wrist a little bit too. So this I would call level one, which is one side repeated. Level two of this drill alternates between one hand and the next. So we'll start with a full rotation, grab, switch, grab, switch, grab, and back and forth. That's it. One thing to note about this drill is notice how the bocce is mostly upright when I grab it. I'm not trying to grab it as soon as possible because that's gonna look like this. It's not the stretch or the, not the uh, conditioning that I'm looking for. All the way up, getting that full rotation. And again, it's not fast and it's not hard. You're gonna get a, a quicker burn, but at least you're alternating back and forth. So it won't burn as much on one side. Now it burns on both sides. Level three is one and a half rotations, or actually half in one. But you'll see what I mean. You'll start with a full rotation, then switch half, then continue with that same hand. Switch, then continue with that hand. So you get the half, full, half, full, half, full. So it's a little bit more of a, maybe a coordination and conditioning drill. It really doesn't matter how many times you do it with one side. But the most important thing, make sure that you've got upright bocce when you do it. As you can see for this next stretch, I'm standing up. It's a lot easier to do than sitting down. You've got your bocce in both hands, palm out, raise the bocce over your head, pick one side and lean in that direction. You wanna bend from the waist and not turn the torso so that your arms are both parallel to the floor. You wanna make sure your arms are in line with each other and that the bocce is pointing down towards the floor, not turned. You may be familiar with this kind of stretch. If you don't have a bocce, this is common or the fingers interlaced. It's the same stretch, but I recommend trying it with and without the bocce to see how this feels different. You get a really good stretch along your side regardless, but when you have the bocce, I feel like there's a different kind of a pull. It's a slightly different stretch. Anyways, try both, you'll see what I mean. I've turned around to make this stretch easier to see. You're gonna put the bocce across your shoulder and grab with the bottom hand. You can think of it either as sort of the scabbard and the sword that you're pulling out, like in the movies, or like you've got a towel and you're drying your back. The idea here is that your top hand will be pulling, your bottom hand is holding on. But it's not just pulling the hand up. This doesn't do much. And if anything, you're gonna move the elbow and the arm away from the back just a little bit. And when you pull it this way, you're actually stretching up here and a little bit back here. And you can pull down as well, but that becomes more of resistance training. This becomes more of a stretch. Of course, you wanna do both sides. Pull the arm away, the elbow out and then pull up. All right, final stretch. You may not be able to complete this stretch, 
But even if you're attempting it, you will get a good stretch out of it. But don't force it. If it's not happening, don't make it happen. You could injure yourself and nobody wants that. You start, the palms up. You're gonna pick one hand. I'm gonna pick my left, maybe your right to mirror. You're gonna bring the palm towards you. Let the elbow come up and then extend the arm. I'll do that again. Palm towards and then as it goes away, the elbow comes up and then finally you extend the arm again. Notice how my other hand just lets it rotate. Okay, watch this hand. Don't worry about what my moving hand is doing. Not much at all. Palm in, elbow up, extend. Part two, you're going to do the same thing with a hand that didn't do anything. Bring the palm in, let the elbow come up, and then as the palm extends, or I should say goes away, you extend the arm. Now this position, you may not be able to get to. That's okay. Even if you're maybe here, you're gonna get a good stretch, right? Get the stretch you can get. Don't worry about completion. Completion doesn't happen, that's okay. But let's say you're here. The third part is to reverse it, starting with the first hand that you did it with. So opposite direction. This time, bend the arm, let the elbow come down and then move the palm away from you. Same thing with the last arm. Bend the arm, the elbow comes down, and the palm goes away. I may, this may be a lot at first, we'll do it again. Three steps per arm. Palm comes in, elbow comes up, arm extends. Palm comes in, elbow comes up, arm extends. Arm retracts, elbow goes down, palm goes away. Arm retracts, elbow goes down, palm goes away. Now you can vary how you want to do this. You can start with either hand and you can unwind with either hand. If you're able to do this, get the stretch first before you get anything else, before you get any kind of speed or fanciness. I've been doing this for a while so I can do a nice flow. This is this is the parlor trick. This isn't getting as much of a stretch as I would if I was doing it to completion and holding it and letting the stretch happen. This just looks both impressive and freaky at the same time. That's not the goal. That's maybe something you get to in, in, in time. But for now, get the stretch on one arm, get the stretch on the other arm, feel the stretch. You should feel it in lots of different places. Then reverse and then reverse. If you're able to do this stretch completely, congratulations, you're gonna be able to get a really good stretch out of this drill. If not, don't worry about it. You're still able to get a really good stretch and that's what matters. I know my stretching videos aren't the most popular videos on my channel. Most people aren't gonna watch these and very few are gonna like them. You're gonna like them though, right? You're gonna click that like button? Of course you are. Anyways, the only reason that I can still play Taiko the way I play it, which is, very physical, big arm circles, jumping up and down, leaping up out, putting my joints, my knees, my elbows, my back through all kinds of misery is because I stretch. And it's because I started stretching when I started playing taiko and I've never stopped. Find stretches that work for you. You don't have to do what I'm doing. My stretches work for me and I'm putting them out there in case someone goes, ooh, that's a cool stretch. I'm gonna try that. But it doesn't matter, just stretch. It's not sexy, it's not fun, but I gotta tell you, if you're not stretching now, you're gonna miss out on what you're able to do now down the line. And that brings us to the end of another stretching video. If you liked it, let me know. Click the like button. Comments, questions, suggestions, you know I love them. Send them my way. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, it's down there in the corner. It's very cold, it's very lonely. Go ahead and make its day by giving it a click. So until next time, keep on stretching and be well.